You know, they say that time travel hasn't been invented yet, but to those people, I would say that they've never sat down at 10 a.m. to start working on a video, and then next time they looked up, it was dark outside. So editing video can obviously be a very time-consuming process. So today, what I wanna do is show you a few of my favorite tips to save some time in DaVinci Resolve when you're editing. So let's go. So when I first started off using DaVinci Resolve, I remember I would spend hours and hours getting my color right just how I liked it. And then I would export the video and it would export it super dark. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. I thought I was doing something wrong. I thought my render settings were wrong, but actually it's a very small little setting in the menu that's throwing off everything. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that real quick. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to the little gear icon here. And then under the color management tab, you're gonna to wanna to go over here to timeline color space. And usually the default is Rec 709 scene. And what you wanna do is switch it to Rec 709A. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do, because the default for every project is gonna be Rec 709 scene. So every time you open a new project, you're gonna to have to remember to switch it to Rec 709A. But we can actually go ahead and go up here to the little three dots. Then we can hit set current settings as default preset. And there you go. Now you don't have to worry anymore about your renders coming out way too dark because what you see up in the preview window here is gonna be exactly what you see in your final render. Now this next tip is extremely useful if you're trying to import folders all the time. So typically what I used to do for a project is I would right click up here in my media pool and I would import media and I would have to do it one by one and I would have to manually go here and create a new bin and then name it. And a lot of editors have their folders set up how they want, but then when they go and import in DaVinci Resolve, they have to redo it, the whole folder structure in DaVinci Resolve. So once you're in the edit page, you're gonna wanna go over to the cut page and you're gonna wanna go up here to this little folder right here and you're gonna import media folder. Then I'm gonna import the folder that I want and we're gonna go back to the edit page and you can see it actually creates its own bin here with the, the folder name. So it saves you a bunch of time in DaVinci Resolve because now you don't have to sit there and make bins and then import everything and match everything up. You can just import the, the folders themselves and you're good to go. All right, and this next tip is to disable snapping on your timeline. Now snapping can actually be a really useful feature and it's basically when you just get close to another clip and it will automatically snap into, into place right next to the, to the next clip. But sometimes you want to get more precise and you don't want to have it automatically snap into place like that. So what you can do is you can press N on the keyboard and then it's going to disable that. And now you can see I can move this freely and there's no snapping. And this is actually very helpful for audio tracks too if you're trying to actually move it to a specific spot in the video to match up like a sound effect or something. Super helpful. Another thing is when you have a clip selected, uh, you can hit N and it will disable it only for that clip when you're moving it. Once you let go of it, you can see the little magnet comes back or goes back off and then snapping still disabled. If you want to disable it for everything, then you're going to have to deselect and then hit N and then it's going to do it. Alternatively, you can of course go up here and click on the little icon and it's going to disable it. But in a pinch, you can just hit the N key and that's going to disable snapping and allow you to move your clip freely. In any editing software, you know it can be a pain in the butt if you have to open up a section between clips like this. If you go in, you have to select all the clips and you have to move everything on the timeline over and then put your clip in, then you have to reselect everything and then bring it back. And if you have a big timeline and you have stuff all over here, it can be really difficult to go over there and scroll and grab everything. Not anymore. So let's say that I wanted to put a clip in between in this little gap right here. and I wanted to open it up. Well, I could actually go here and click insert clip and it would insert a clip there but maybe you wanna drag something else from the other side of the timeline. So instead of having to go in and manually hit command and then select everything, you can put your playhead in that gap right there and then you can hit option and then Y on your keyboard and it's gonna select everything in front of the playhead and then you can move whatever you want. You can put the clip in here and you can bring it and drag it back. And now if there's something that you don't wanna move, all you have to do is hold command and then just deselect whatever track you don't wanna move and then you can move it freely just like that. This is super helpful and it helps save me a lot of time and a lot of frustration from having to move a whole bunch of clips and go and select everything manually myself. All right guys, so those are a few tips that I found super helpful. I hope you find them helpful too. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you guys in future videos. Peace.